This is the technique of percutaneous pin fixation for treatment of distal radius fractures. This patient had a fracture of the metaphysis uh, with dorsal tilt of the distal radial articular surface and escaphalunate dissociation. So the plan was to address the distal radius fracture with percutaneous pin fixation. The technique is done optimally with the patient in longitudinal traction um, to distract the fracture fragments. Uh, here, the uh, Chinese finger traps are applied to the thumb and index finger for longitudinal traction. And then 10 pounds of weight are applied to the uh, end of the traction device. Uh, in this case, uh, we use a uh, hand table with the uh, traction device incorporated in the table with a pulley over the end of the table. So 10 pounds of weight are applied. And since we do make an incision, uh, the extremities exsanguinated with an Esmark bandage and the tourniquet inflated uh, generally to uh, 90 to 100 millimeters above systolic pressure. So the tourniquet is inflated and the image intensifier is brought into the operative field uh, to assist in uh, the reduction of the fracture. You can see direct pressure is applied to the dorsum of the distal radial metaphysis to try to correct the dorsal tilt. And radiographs are obtained to confirm that reduction. Uh, in this instance, the fracture was radially translated and an attempt was made to correct that radial translation by ulnar deviation of the wrist in order to place the K wires uh, through the radial styloid. A small exposure is made uh, about one centimeter uh, in length distal to the radial styloid, the purpose being to identify and retract the branches of the superficial sensory branch of the radial nerve, as well as the contents of the first extensor compartment. Here the radial styloid is being exposed. and just showing the branches of the superficial sensory branch which are retracted. Exposing the styloid for application of the radial styloid pins. The pins are always placed using a tissue protector in order to not wrap up the uh, radial nerve. So here the pin is placed at the tip of the radial styloid and then the tissue protector placed on the bone and the pin is placed into the distal fracture fragment, not across the fracture. 
Uh, after the pin is initially placed, we will check our reduction and if any further manipulation needs to be done, it's done at that time and then the pin is driven across the fracture. So the C-arm is brought into the field uh, confirming the reduction. Um, now in this case, there was some residual radial translation of the distal fracture fragment. You can see the pin in the distal fragment, not across the fracture. And in order to try to correct the radial translation, an intrafocal pin is placed into the fracture. Uh, you can see it's placed from proximal to distal and will be used as a lever to try to ultimately translate the fracture fragment, improving the reduction. And here the position is checked and at least some of that radial translation has been corrected and here it's the fracture is further levered ulnarly and a fairly good correction is obtained. Uh, the radial styloid pin is then placed or rather is then driven across the fracture into the opposite cortex of the radius proximal to the fracture line. Uh, it is embedded into the cortex, may be driven just beyond the cortex, but only uh, a millimeter or so. So here the pin is being driven across the fracture, engaging the opposite cortex. And this effectively stabilizes the fracture in the coronal plane. A second pin is placed and the pin position and fracture reduction are confirmed with the image intensifier. Here that second pin is driven into the opposite cortex to stabilize the fixation. Now, in order to make the fracture as stable as possible, an orthogonal configuration of the pins is optimal. And so the third pin is placed in the dorsal rim of the distal radius, just distal to Lister's tubercle. Uh, that's confirmed on the lateral view seen in the upper right. And once the pin position is confirmed the pin is driven from dorsal to volar across the fracture into the volar cortex of the distal radius proximal to the fracture line. Care is taken not to drive the pin much beyond the volar cortex because of the uh, presence of the median nerve volar to the uh, distal radius. The pins are bent, um, superficial to the skin. We always leave the pins uh, superficial for ease of removal. And the radial wound is closed with absorbable suture 
so that the splint does not need to be removed uh, just to take out um, non-absorbable sutures. At this point, the uh, procedure for stabilization of the distal radius was completed and we proceeded to uh, treat the scaphalunate dissociation.